With hydronephrosis, hydro means water, nephro means kidneys, and osis refers to a disease state. So hydronephrosis refers to a disease or condition where excessive amounts of water in the form of urine causes the kidneys to dilate. Now, normally inside the kidneys, urine forms in the nephron and then drains through the papilla, which is an inverted cone-shaped pyramid that, like a showerhead, pours urine into the calyces, which come from the Latin calyx, which means large cup, like a Roman chalice. From there, it enters the renal pelvis, which funnels the urine into the ureter. If there's an obstruction to this normal flow of urine, then it can cause urinary pressures to increase and push on the walls of these structures, making them dilate. This might happen because of something within the urinary tract, for example, a kidney stone, or from external compression, for example, when a fetus pushes up against the urinary tract during pregnancy. Typically, the dilation starts closest to the site of the problem and then slowly continues back up towards the kidneys. Now, if there's dilation of just the ureter, it's called hydroureter. But if there's dilation of the ureter, renal pelvis, and the calyces, it's called hydroureteronephrosis, or more commonly just hydronephrosis. The causes of hydronephrosis differ by age group. Hydronephrosis in the fetus is called antenatal hydronephrosis. And sometimes the cause here is unknown, and it develops and disappears on its own. So this might be a variation of normal development. But if hydronephrosis progresses through fetal development into the third trimester, then there might be an actual underlying pathology. For example, there's congenital ureteropelvic junction obstruction, which is where the ureteropelvic junction, which connects the ureter to the kidney, fails to canalize during development, which then obstructs the flow of urine. Another cause is vesico-ureteral reflux, which is where urine is allowed to backflow from the bladder into the ureters and eventually the kidneys. In young children, hydronephrosis usually results from a congenital malformation, like a ureterocele, which is a sac of tissue in the distal ureter, that also obstructs the flow of urine from the ureter into the bladder, as well as posterior urethral valves, which is a malformation of the posterior urethra where flaps of tissue obstruct the outflow of urine. In contrast, adults with hydronephrosis usually develop it as a result of an acquired disease, like kidney stones, which is the most common cause, as well as prostatic hyperplasia, or enlarged prostate, which blocks the flow of urine out of the bladder. Now, severe long-standing hydronephrosis can lead to nephron destruction and can result in an increase in serum creatinine, as well as electrolyte imbalances. When this sort of damage has happened, the kidney can develop a dilated ureter and renal pelvis, as well as compression atrophy, which is thinning of the renal medulla and cortex. Symptoms and complications of hydronephrosis are often related to the obstruction, since that's the context in which hydronephrosis is usually found. Obstruction might cause flank pain or groin pain, as well as a urinary tract infection. And the hydronephrosis itself might cause symptoms only once there's serious damage to the kidneys. A worrisome complication is post-renal azotemia, which is when an obstruction to urine flow causes the kidney to increase reabsorption of urea, resulting in increased nitrogen-containing compounds in the blood. Hydronephrosis is usually diagnosed with ultrasound, often prenatal ultrasound, meaning during pregnancy. Hydronephrosis is given a grade based on the severity, from 0 to 4. Grade 0 means that there's no dilation. Grade 1 is when there's a dilation of the renal pelvis, but the calyces remain normal. Grade 2 is when there's a dilation of the renal pelvis and the calyces. Grade 3 is when there's a moderate dilation of the renal pelvis and calyces, in addition to mild cortical thinning and flattening of the papillae. And lastly, grade 4 is when there's severe renal dilation and cortical thinning. In children, intravenous urography or pyelography is also commonly used to assess for congenital pelvi-ureteric junction obstruction. In adults, a CT scan is commonly done because it can be helpful in identifying kidney stones, which is the most common underlying cause of the hydronephrosis. Hydronephrosis treatment focuses on relieving the obstruction and allowing the urine that might have accumulated behind the obstruction to flow out normally. Acutely, a nephrostomy tube can be used, 
which is a plastic tube inserted through the skin into the renal pelvis, and this allows the accumulated urine to drain out. Chronically, somebody could have a ureter extent, which pops the ureter open, or a pyeloplasty, which is a surgical remake of the renal pelvis. Lower urinary tract obstructions, like prostatic hyperplasia, can be treated with the insertion of a urinary catheter that keeps the urethra open, or a suprapubic catheter that causes bladder decompression. All right, as a quick recap, hydronephrosis is typically caused by either obstruction in or compression of the urinary tract, which leads to a buildup of urine and pressure and dilation of the ureter, renal pelvis, and calyces. Thanks for watching. You can help support us by donating on Patreon, subscribing to our channel, or telling your friends about us on social media.